First of all, I would say we try to portray a balanced scenario, uh, one in the context of continuing development and increasing agricultural productivity. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we acknowledge the fact that uh, climate change is a threat that is already apparent. Uh, we are seeing increased number of uh, uh, droughts and floods uh, with increased severity. So uh, the impact uh, on especially on the poorest uh, of the poor in rural areas, will be uh, the largest. There are a number of options available uh, in agriculture, uh, forestry, and fisheries. So, for example, in, uh, for rice production, alternate wetting and drying uh, is an option that increases productivity uh, by reducing the input for water, while at the same time reducing uh, methane emissions by 45%. So we have both an adaptation side and a mitigation uh, uh, element of that. In the livestock sector, improving uh, feeding practices and health and phytosanitary measures can also greatly increase uh, the um, uh, productivity and reduce the emissions per unit uh, produced. In the fishery side, uh, we have that the largest potential is uh, in reducing energy consumption associated both with fishing itself but also with the value chain of uh, processing storage uh, of fish products. That's the biggest area for fisheries. For forestries, for forestry, we have that there's both forest degradation and deforestation. Some kind of reduced impact logging measures uh, for uh, timber production are a way of reducing degradation. For reducing deforestation, it's a broader issue of land use change. So not specifically about uh, practices and technologies, but a broader land use planning. Of the many uh, agricultural practices that can improve uh, farmers' resilience and provide adaptation benefits, uh, many of these uh, are not being adopted by farmers, despite having economic benefits. Uh, the reason is that smallholders especially face uh, institutional, policy, and financial obstacles to the adoption of these practices. So for example, uh, access to credit, access to markets, uh, access to extension advice. These are all things that could help uh, farmers in adopting these measures that would improve uh, their livelihoods. So that's one area, finding the entry points to improve the adoption of adaptation uh, practices in agriculture. Another aspect where they could help use support is uh, helping in income diversification, so social protection policies. Uh, or active labor policies that can help uh, improve the options that smallholders have in terms of uh, reacting to climate shocks, in terms of not having only one source of income.